Welcome back to This Week in Louisiana Politics. You know the state budget has been a very contentious topic this year despite the state being flush with cash. Capital reporter Shannon Heck has been following those developments. Shannon, I'm guessing that the governor is not very happy with Republicans right now. Yeah, he gave a mid-session press conference this week and he said that the House Republicans plan essentially doesn't make sense and he's hoping there'll be a lot of changes on the Senate side. Take a look at what he had to say. Budget talks are swirling around the Capitol after House Republicans made major changes to the governor's proposal. With the removal of teacher pay raises and not backfilling lost federal money for early childhood education, many are looking to the Senate to change the course. The idea that we can't fashion a budget that reflects our priorities, given the, the funding that is available because of the condition of our economy right now, which is strong and firing on all cylinders, that would be beyond irresponsible. It's hard for me to fathom. The Republicans say they did not want to bust the constitutional spending cap and want to avoid doing so by paying down teacher retirement debt. But the governor disagrees that busting the cap for these investments is a bad thing. He says the cap was put in place when state funding was much more unpredictable and based on the oil and gas industry. It wasn't intended, intended to prevent any expenditures under the current circumstances. Uh, where you have um, uh, such robust growth in the economy and so forth. The short fiscal session has been hijacked in a way by national social issues, with many anti-LGBTQ bills advancing and drawing fierce testimony and rampant misinformation about the community. Governor Edwards says bills like this distract from the real issues. I don't know how anybody can conclude that we actually have a problem that needs to be addressed or to be fixed or that these bills actually address and fix uh, a problem. Lawmakers have until June 8th to pass a budget and all their bills. At the Capitol for your local election headquarters, I'm Shannon Hecht. Okay, so the governor and the Democrats are obviously saying those mean old Republicans, they've taken away the teacher pay raise, but what are the Republicans saying? What's, what's their logic behind this? So like I said earlier, the Republicans are nervous about busting that constitutional spending cap which was originally put in place when the state's income was a little bit uh, unsure. It relied a lot on the oil and gas industry, so they don't want to do that. They see that as overspending. Uh, so they instead are going to put some of that money from the early childhood education and the teacher pay raises into paying down teacher retirement debt, which the state has already been putting about 10% towards since uh, John Bell Edwards took office. So it's been good payments, but they want to make a bigger payment, and they say that those savings will allow the local locals to implement a teacher pay raise, but uh, charter schools will not be able to get in on that, and many are worried that the locals will instead use that money to build a new gym or catch up on other construction projects or what have you. So there's no promise that it'll be a teacher pay raise, and there's also no promise that it'll be the same amount that the governor is proposing for a statewide blanket raise. Right, so they do have a plan, it's just not one that the governor or the Democrats like very much. No, and, and they say that they should focus on these early childhood education funding, and so the Republicans say that it's not a cut, rather they are not backfilling the lost COVID aid from the feds, uh, but we've, as a state, have really focused on investing in early childhood education. We see the results of it, the importance of it, so the governor wants to make sure that every child uh, has a seat in these programs, and if we roll back that $51 million, as the Republicans are proposing, about 4,000 children are going to lose their seat that they had under that COVID funding. So in addition to the budget talks, uh, there's also, there are also all these uh, social issues that lawmakers have been dealing with. Right. It's a short fiscal session, so normally there's big focus on the budget, tax, tax reform and everything, but with this national push that we're seeing, there's been a lot of anti-LGBTQ legislation being brought here, our own version of the Don't Say Gay, trying to ban gender-affirming care for minors. And so normally in past years, these bills maybe got one big hearing, but they would die in committee or not get assigned a hearing at all, like we saw last year with a gender-affirming care bill. But this year, it's going to big blows, long testimony, and they continue to advance even though they're seen as hateful legislation. So that's really kind of taken the spotlight off of the tax and insurance and all these other issues that the state really 
needs to be tackling. So they're seeing it as uh, hateful legislation, but the authors of these bills and, and, and even the proponents would say that this is something for the parents to sign off on and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's family oriented. Right, they, they, they form it as protecting children, giving parents rights and everything, but uh, those against the bill say that it's not equal for all, for all parents. Parents of transgender children, of gay children and everything are not getting equal rights here and a lot of the LGBT community feels that this very specifically targets them, same with the library bills, trying to keep certain books away from children. So it's been a lot of emotional, um, passionate testimony on sure. both sides on this. Yeah. All right, well, we know you're gonna keep an eye on it for the rest of the week. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Stay with us, we'll be right back.